Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we talk about what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, today I want to talk about space. No, not the vacuum that fills the gap between a politician's ears, but the place beyond the clouds and the outer atmosphere, the place called outer space. Now, as many of you are aware, Russia has a long and distinguished history in space. It started in earnest with the launch of the world's first satellite Sputnik and continued with Yuri Gagarin as the first man in space that followed with Valentina Tereshkova, the first woman in space. Now, I have it on good authority from my friends at Space City where I got this shirt that there's not going to be a first LGBT plus transgender going into space, at least via Russia. Now, also Russia's had a succession of manned orbiting space stations going back to 1971 with the Soyuz program, which then followed on to the Mir program. Now, two days ago, the Soyuz MS-25 spacecraft, which had been carrying the cosmonauts Oleg Komanenko and Nikolai Shobh, as well as the US astronaut Tracy Dyson, returned to Earth with the three crew members landing safely. Now, the two Russian cosmonauts have been in space for a total of 374 days, representing the longest flight undertaken under the auspices of the ISS program, that's the International Space Station. Now, analysts have highlighted the significance of the record in preparing for long-term interplanetary missions, such as the expeditions to Mars. Now, these are obviously being talked about a lot. Plus, the data obtained from the experiment will be invaluable to the entire global sector, including Elon Musk, as this SpaceX lacks the necessary experience of prolonged human presence in space. So, how does the work and experience in orbit relate to the potential for interplanetary flights? Well, the record set by Oleg Konomenko and Nikolai Shobh is of great importance in the field of cosmonautics, particularly in the context of preparing for these interplanetary missions like Mars. Now, it's increasingly important to understand how factors such as microgravity, radiation and isolation affect the health, physical fitness, cognitive function and psyche during a person's time in space as it gets longer and increases. According to Nicholas Oxman, who's an expert in manned spaceflight and the author of Cosmonaut Diva Channel. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which you can do by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me, and I'm thanking all of you for watching. Anyway, I do like it and I do like all of you. Now, it's important that long-term expeditions like this one help improve methods for preventing the loss of muscle mass, bone density and other physiological problems that may arise during prolonged stays in real zero gravity conditions. Now, astronauts who spend a lot of time on the space station have the opportunity to test various life support systems, resource management and autonomous technologies which will be crucial and critical for long distance missions where the communications of Earth will become more limited. Now, the Soyuz MS-25 aircraft, which brought the cosmonauts and Tracy Dyson back, landed just outside the Kazakh city of Zenz Kazan. And the undocking of the spacecraft from the space station took place at 11.36 Moscow time and it landed uh, at 1439, so it was actually quite a short journey back. Now, that's not going to be the case when they go into further outer orbit. Now, this mission was the longest duration of a stay under the International Space Station program, and Oleg Korimenko and Nikolai Shub spent a total to together of 374 days in space. Now, the previous individuals to achieve this are the Russian compatriots Valery Polyakov and Sergei Andiev, who spent 430 days in orbit in 1994-95 and 380 days in 1998-99. Tracy Dyson only spent 184 days. Now, according to Dr. Aslan Nyakov, 
a physician specialising in aviation and space medicine at the Institute of Medical and Biological Systems of the Russian Academy of Science. As long as the main challenges for astronauts on long-term expeditions is the prolonged effectness of weightlessness on the human body. Now, we noted that cosmonauts only experience an overload of stress on the body during the takeoff and landing stages, and that's regardless during the duration of the flight or the orbit. However, during the states of the orbit in space itself, the body has an insufficient stress load. For example, all I can think of is over a thousand days in orbit with no stress. Now the future expedition to Mars will last around 500 days and that's there and back, which is twice what the current cosmonauts have spent in the space station. Therefore, such long flights will provide an opportunity to better study the effect of space on, on the body, according to Aslan Nizayov. Now, when the cosmonauts come back to Earth, medical studies are going to be conducted to assess the impact on the their almost year-long stay on the International uh, Space Station, particularly on their cardiovascular system, their muscles, bones and other organs. Now, the primary objective of manned cosmonautics is to develop the capabilities to live and work in space, according to Dmitry Sergeyevets. Now, from one orbit of Yuri, Yuri Gagarin's flight through to German Titov's 24-hour flight through to Polyakov's 437 days of orbit, which remains a record to this day, we reached a point where a person has endured a total of 1,100 days of a Russian human presence outside the Earth, albeit during all I caught common includes five flights. In terms of space, a thousand days is a equivalent to two round trips to Mars. That's the rough equivalent of the physical condition of knowing Kalenko, who could be somebody who's already done something that long. Now, it's important to note when you are travelling to other planets, cosmic and solar radiation will be additional factors to consider in spaceflight. According to Dmitry Sergeyevitz, he stated that in line with the current requirements for cosmonauts, the maximum permitted duration of a single flight uh, in a long career is one year. Now, furthermore, cosmonauts have demonstrated that a person can survive quite well in microgravity conditions for a year and a half, with and without breaks. Now, according to Andrei Enoman, who's a member of the Russian Academy of Cosmonautics and a very clever man, by the way, I've met him several times, states that the practical value of the long flights in orbits is still limited. He says, of all space missions currently in preparation, only the expedition to Mars will last for a comparable length of time. However, he says, this implementation is some way off. He says, it's critical not only to study the effect of zero gravity, but also the impacts that they will occur on the flight during the up and coming expedition to Mars. By way of it, illustration, he says, this includes radiation. I mean, experiments conducted on the ISS do not provide sufficient grounds for this assumption, as the radiation background along the route to Mars will be completely different. I mean, there's still hope that the Russian orbital space station will still be launched in 2027, when it's scheduled to be put into a polar rather than in or orbit, where cosmonauts will be partially outside the protection of the Earth's radiation field. Now, Mr. Musk uh, previously announced that his first rockets would be sent to Mars in the next few years, with the first expeditions following thereafter. Now, according to Dmitry Sergeyevich, if these plans will not be implemented with such rapidity and pace, and in addition to the current limitations of technology, Mr. Musk still lacks the second half of the equation for the comprehensive implementation of the programme. Namely, experience of human existence in space. Now, you have to bear in mind that despite the achievements of SpaceX and its reusable rockets, it's only achieved what Roscosmos did before I was born in the 1950s, and that was launch satellites into space. Okay, it's launched quite a number of them for Starlink, and it's delivered cargo and personnel to the International Space Station. But do bear in mind that Cosmos has been doing that for 50 years. 
I mean, okay, it's built and launched manned space stations, Roscosmos has, in orbit since 1971 with a series of Salyut stations followed by Mir and then the International Space Station. Also has an extensive training program for US and other foreign astronauts who will train in Russia before go heading to the ISS, and I know that because I've met several of them. Now Musk is going to have to work with Roscosmos if he wants to be more than just a personnel and delivery service to, uh, for goods into space. He needs to learn from the US who have collaborated with Russia on the International Space Station project, learning from Russia and adopting many of their techniques. Okay, SpaceX in context may have got ahead of Russia in rocket engineering technology. But Russia is still the leader in space exploration knowledge and experience, and that's something that Musk's millions and billions cannot buy. Rodin highlighted the unique circumstances surrounding the ISS expedition, noting that it's taken place amidst the significant challenges with Boeing Starliner. Now, this American flagship company's so-called reusable manned spare craft was not technically prepared Unlike Roscosmos is all the technology that people have laughed at but seems to work perfectly. So it ended up Boeing stranding astronauts on the ISS with no way back to Earth apart from using either Russians or SpaceX. I mean their spacecraft returned to Enman because there were several issues. So Russia, despite not having the tens of billion dollars thrown at it, uh, like the US SpaceX and a massive NASA budget, the wasted Boeing billions, continues to lead the way in space travel, exploration and um, scientific knowledge. Now if Musk really wants to get to Mars, then what he really needs to do first is book a ticket to Space City, which is 50 kilometers outside of Moscow. Well, if you spend some time as I have, you'll learn so much more that money just cannot buy. Trust me, I've been there, I've met a lot of people, and I've got a lot more at my time than just this wonderful shirt. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website um, by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Don't forget the comments. Love to see your comments. Love to have your comments and I'd love to respond to them. See you all again soon. Thank you.